Welcome everyone. This is our meeting with the Board of Selectmen. Today is September 12th. It is 4.30 p.m. Is there a motion to call the meeting to order? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, Thank you, gentlemen. The first order of business to approve the minutes regular session June 22nd, 2023, and the regular session minutes of August 22nd, 2023. Is there a motion? Motion approved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, first order of business is DPW. We have uh, paving up for discussion. Um, first, I think that will just hit on paving. Mr. Minad? Okay. So I just asked for general topic of paving okay um, just so we can get to the bottom of it kind of correlates into the ever source scheme of things right um, I think there's still there's a question mark on Anthony Street so that one's already been approved we've already got the funding from ever source for that we have had this discussion a couple of different times about the reclamation guy Yep. Not getting back in contact, but you updated me. I think it was yesterday, and you yep. said you have been updated. So if you want to give board that update. Yep. Um, we actually got an email from them. Was that yesterday or the day before? Monday, right? Yeah, Friday, Monday. Friday night. Friday we got it? Friday night. So, um, yeah, he actually gave us a date. So we said October 2nd he is coming in to reclaim. So we're right, right after him. So it, it's he's probably there four days maybe, and then we'll be right in after him. So. So the week of the seventh or whatever will be right in to pave it. So the only thing the only thing I'll ask is there's been some comments from some of the jobs that we've previously um, paved where some of our line cuts aren't straight across driveways and then how we transition from the road to the driveway. So if we can pay a little more attention that's, to that. That's a little different too because this is a reclaim instead of um no, coal planing and the coal plane machine is cutting and then taking that two inches out so we're kind of going to his line on the on the sides but i understand what you're saying about the lines and uh, uh you know i mock if the line's not it. straight at the driveway we should be making a saw cut then ourselves and chiseling yeah. that little bit yeah. up three or four inches and make a nice straight line instead yeah. of it looking like you know a zigzag yeah. all the way down somebody's driveway line that's all i'm asking it's yeah. just uh we need to try to be a little more clean with our cuts and thing, and even the sides of the road, nice straight yep. edges, right? Yeah, this um, one's going to be different because this is a reclaim machine too, so everything's getting ground yeah, out. Yeah, I get it. Foot, so. I get it. It's just for a much broader discussion of paving okay. and how we we conduct ourselves um, Jim, in the pavement process, Mr. Moore. Well, I'm hesitant to notify the residents now of October second for the work. Yep. You know that week. Yep. I think we should let them know there's going to be activity there, either. You know, a week in advance or a few weeks. I mean, a few right. days. No, no, I can put it out. We we could actually put letters out too. We've done that. Yeah. Yeah. Letters, or, you know, drop them off or something or yeah. other. We put it out now, and it doesn't happen, and we look yeah. silly. But yeah. once we, you know, no, I could put. What I could do is put it kind of on a letter that it's going to be on or around. It is anticipated we will start work on this day, right? Yeah. <coughs> so yeah. um, everybody in the neighborhood kind of understand. All these people on that street understand yes. it, right? Correct. Um, yep. I agree that we should be doing that in all all activities when we're going to be you know your crews out there in the road and not surprised one morning you wake up and yeah, you have yeah. all this <laughs> stuff out there and people can't get up out of their driveways to go to work and everybody's yeah. moving their vehicles and you can put it on the sign and i can actually put the sign up too as well over there we're, you know starting this date and stuff we can put that at the top of the street so people know too as well. But we'll put it. Yeah, we put. Yeah, he put yeah, yeah that, that that works. The yeah, little yeah. sign you put up a message, right? Yep. Um, yep. And that's what it's get the road done. So I think the sign works. That, that's yeah, yeah, as long yeah. as yeah, whatever it is. Like like he's saying, uh, like you know, a week early, so we can get the sign the heck out of there when yeah, we're actually. Yeah. The, we don't want anybody doing anything yep. dumb with the sign. So maybe we could talk to Dennis at Custom Auto and maybe use a little bit of his parking lot to put our sign there. Yep. Right at the top of the road, right? So yep. everybody coming in can see it. Yep. Right? Leave it there for a week. Yep. I had. And then the next thing I, I guess I'm going to start talking about is it, it's unfortunate, but there's never been a real plan um, for Eversource. They, they have a plan to come in and ask for permits to cut roads. But from what I can see, there's no real plan to get us the money for paving the roads in ample time, right? 
So what I'm saying is we, we have been a road that we've contacted. I know you've had conversations with Eversource. You and I went out and measured Middle Road from Balls Corner down to a roughly the EMS station on Middle Road, 900 feet. Myrtle and Wilbur that they came in and reopened up the road after it was paved. And you sent me an email where it's kind of a cockamanian looking swilly willy that's saying, well, we're going to pave this, but we're not willing to do this. And I guess you've had some conversations in the past saying that they were going to do curb to curb. In them sections, correct. And then they show it's like half a lane on one of them. Half a lane, right. half a lane on middle. Correct. But there was still full width that was supposed to be done from across from Wilbur all the way across Mill Road. That's that, this yellow, which I don't know if you want me to bring it up to you guys. Sure. So, yeah, so get copies down. Okay. Are you the copies from? But I can go over and explain to you guys. So when they went into Wilbur in um, Myrtle, yep. They, they, have, they gave me this because they, they, they messed up. They, when they did that, they sh were supposed to go and tap into the new main on Middle Road, mm -hmm. which they didn't. They had to go back into our new roads. So mm -hmm. when they said they were going to do that, they sent me this. This is what they promised they were going to do. <laughs> so they told me they're going to do this. So this is full width Middle Road. Just that little section. section you know, the width of the, basically the width of the side street for everybody gonna, at home to watch it. And they get a half lane the rest of the way at 900 feet, so which is this direction here. So, in the meantime, Anthony's here now, so this one actually even got denied to do. Even this section, which they promised they were gonna do this section for us. They even this half one. So we kind of denied that, and they sounded like they're just gonna to give us the funding instead. Which Anthony's right here, and he can actually speak a little more on that if, if you guys would like. But in the past, this was promised to me to get done, and it didn't. So, by Eversource, correct. They were supposed to do that, at least them sections, because, you know what I mean, they made that deal because I was shutting them down that day, and they made that deal so they could finish that job on Middle Road and tying that in. But so not to pay Middle Road the 900 feet curb to curb. Solid, but it's curb to curb in that section from yeah. over. Yeah. You know, so say 200 feet of it, 100 over there, and another 100 on Myrtle, full, both sides of Middle plus so a couple hundred feet of middle road would get done? Full, correct. Oh, by this one, yes. And then it was for, like I said, from Myrtle where they went into mm -hmm. Myrtle and where they went to Wilbur, it was full yep. with as yep. well. So and that was up, we measured, was we, measured up, made with them. we measured up 35 feet from middle road? Correct. From Remember? curb to curb. Yep. When and now you're saying that they're denying that? That's what happened, correct. Anthony, you have something to say? Uh, so it's Anthony Valu Community Relations at Eversource. Um, yeah, so I I got this email from Dan uh, with Tom from Tom Cost, who was the gas manager on construction side last year. Um, I I just got restoration the numbers from restoration today, showing the the co-op numbers going back to the town. Um, I'm not I'm not on this email, so I'm, I'll I got to go back to the director then and figure this part out because I think that there could be a mistake here on our part. This is this is Tom and a, uh, a couple other staff internally at other source, and and, and all the meetings that we have had, I've taken all the information that you guys have given to us, brought it all back to restoration. Uh, that was the information I was given today, so I'll have to clear that up. Okay. The the problem with other source is is you're great for asking permission to cut the streets to get your job done. The problem that I've been having, and Mr. Kelly and I have been doing a lot of the approvals with Mr. Manad. The problem that I have is you're not very good at coming back to the town and saying, hey, you know what? You, the permit's open, we're done with the job, we close the permit, and from that day forward, there should be a number of months where that allocation of funds should be discussed in, with Mr. Manada, our DPW director, and saying, this is the money that we're gonna allocate for these roads, and it should be done within a six month period, right? We don't need a road trenches like my neighborhood is right now, it's a complete disaster, and it's funding source been spoken about from Eversource and my neighborhood is freaking out again yeah right just like they were when you were in there doing work and we allowed I I allowed you to go in and do the work because it was my neighborhood and I could keep an eye on what was going on um, and it just turned into a complete disaster Anthony you know that because you yeah. shut the project down yourself when Corey right. Drive started scalloping out right right, right away um, so you know the words out of my mouth are the truth I'm trying to say now is if Mr. Menard's dealing with 
this middle road Wilbur Myrtle thing. Where's that team that's supposed to come back and say, you know what, the permit's been closed for six months, here's the allocation, that team should come out and say, this is what we can allocate towards that project, the project costs, and hopefully Mr. Menard and the board are acceptable to that amount of money, um, and then we move forward, we have that money sitting in the kitty, maybe it's three more months we wait, whatever it may be, but that money's gonna be sitting ready to go for when we're ready to go, right? And we can plan around and schedule around that kind of activity, but that's not being done. It's I clearly not being done. I totally agree with you. It should be done quicker. Uh, I've been chasing restoration for about two weeks to try to get these numbers back. Uh, I apologize for the delay, and we just got to do better going forward. I mean, we're coming up now into the the end of the season, right? Yep. And like Corey Bedano, Henrietta, which is all going to be curb to curb because that was a newly paved road. Henrietta, this is 25 probably foot for off of Bedano. That needs to be curb to curb because he cut into that again. Um, after it's been paved, I mean, we got Tracy Street. That's not Tracy that's Street. That's Helen Street, right? Yeah, that's Tracy. It's very right. Helen. Tracy, we talked Helen. about that last fall, right? Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. So those being those done. Are, uh, so those have to wait for a winter season to go by. I don't yeah. think so. I thought we those were on no, the. No, I just did that. This is just. Yeah, yeah, well, I'd like to let that over yeah. winter, and then I'll like to pave them after. So yeah, that'll be a next year. Compact is good, so it's it's. Should sell yeah, off at least six months, sit. like you said, six months, and then we'll okay, go. I was under the impression Helen Street was targeted for this fall, though. Yeah, um, we, we kind of prematurely did that fall, but we, we, ex we, we did approve to do that out of Chapter 90 funds, right? And approve the Helen yeah, Street. So we're going to try to go with that in the spring, that one streets. I thought. But they the usually, draws. They usually let trenches sit for, through a winter season, right? Let the water penetrate into the trench and, and do all its falling and everything else. And whatever's going to settle is going to settle. So the road settle. It's usually a six month process. So. Um, my neighborhood's been well exceeded that six month process. Middle Road that we're talking about right now has been the same thing and Wilbur and Myrtle have been the same thing. But yet no f no discussion about, hey, this is the money we're giving you and we're, now what are we gonna do? We're not gonna be in time getting money allocated to those, those projects and then our residents are gonna be stumbling over four or five inch potholes in my streets because that's exactly what's already occurring again it's it's dangerous and i get a lot of senior citizens in my neighborhood and quite honestly on that side of town that are walking and, and it's a hazard to them so i actually just got the email today i just forwarded it to dpw within the last five minutes so hopefully all that stuff can be smoothed out this week and the payments can get uh down here as fast as possible so on, on that dis on that i just gotta go back and check middle road on that discussion gentlemen i think it's it would be probably good business practice that we put it out to bid with the Middle Road, the Wilma, the Myrtle, the Corey, the Madonna, and we're gonna, Dan can do all the measurements, put it out to bid, and that's how we're going to keep you honest, ever so honest, because quite honestly, with us doing the co-op and us doing it in-house, we don't really know um, if we're being treated fairly on that amount of money. So I think if we go out to bid, do something, go out to bid, we get to we get to make sure so we know what it is y'all y'all responsible for half the road we're going to be doing the other half of the road we'll know exactly where that bid comes in if it's eighty thousand dollars for a road and y'all saying i'm going to give you thirty thousand dollars well that's not fair right because it's it's not the fifty percent correct so that's what that's how i think that we have an obligation to our taxpayers to do this every so often and make sure that we're we're being compensated the right amount of dollars value to these projects so um, it's it's you know I like to see that put out the bid. I'm not saying that that's exactly the direction this board needs to go in, but let's let's get bids in and see where those roads come in at, right? Um, middle road, I think you know the main drags. We need to get ourselves a little bit further away from do, trying to do main drags. Um, we've had some issues with some of the main drags that we've done, especially long stretches. I mean, we're just not we're not staffed to do those kind of long stretches of road. So you know, it's my I think it's in the best interest of the town and this board to put it out to bid and see what we get from bid spec. Keep everybody honest. Can we do that, Dan? Put it out to bid? Yep. And then we'll wait for him to get us money allocated and figure out that mess that Mr. Menard's been trying to deal with with Middle Road, Merle, yep. Wilbur. But we'll put it all. I mean, it's all right in the same vicinity. Put it, you're gonna have to, I don't know what you do, Dan, if you're gonna go out and do the measurements. We've already done Myrtle, Wilbur, Middle Road, so then you gotta go Middle Road across Middle Road up to Corey, Padano, 
Henry, nothing Anthony across the top for the distance that it is, measure that, and then Henry Etter, and then however you would do the bid spec for milling two inches, right? You do put like a minimum two inch milling, and then yep. whatever you need to do. Okay. Um, and then perhaps I th also think that Mr. Manad and his staff, as is, is much work as we have them doing, I think before we, if we were to go that route, that we need to make sure that our storm basins are re leveled. Um, to the right road height, right? Instead of paving <coughs> over water gate valves and things of the like and leaving them three or four inches in the ground with asphalt over them and things like that, we need to raise them and do whatever we need to do from the DPW standpoint. Let's fix the stone basins. You did one, Dan, already. I think Myrtle and Wilbur, you fixed those already. And that's really the way it should be done, right? Don't leave them sunk into the ground, get in there. If you have to raise, pull them out and then reconcrete and then rest them back inside so they're good to go forever. Well a long period of time I know for us is a strong word but I think we need to start doing that and getting better at what we do um, and I think the more we we have these practices the better off the team's going to be moving down the road right and paving so you got your hands full Dan's got his just so you guys know Dan's got a lot of work on his agenda he's got the Anthony Street project he's got Mendo Road storm drain work I know if you guys show up at the town barn he's had pipe and storm basins and things there for six months now and you know he hasn't been able to get out there because of all the other little things that he's doing so you know he's, he's got his hands full for other projects that need to be done I think Mendo Road storm drains need to be done prior to winter season you agree I agree <coughs> yep. um, so you got your th thing going and whatever you need to do is we'll put it out to bid. How fast, how long do we put things out to bid? How fast can that be expedited? Like, can you stop that process, Kath, as soon as possible? Mm -hmm. And how long do we have to sit it out at bid, do you know? It's a few weeks, right? Yeah, a few weeks four to six, four to six weeks. Yeah, yeah. usually it's 21. 21 days? Yeah, but then it's, it's gonna go on that. you put in the central register and all that stuff, so. It's gonna. That's a couple of weeks there, and you yeah. know what I mean. So you got. So basically, thirty. Well, let's call it thirty days, right? Yeah. Can you? How fast can you get that stuff done, Dan? Can you get I'll out get and measure tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you already got the nine hundred feet, you know, middle road down at the PD and EMS, right? Yeah. That's already been figured out, so you already know what you're looking for. The two inch mill, blah blah blah, how to make the description of it, um, and then you got middle road from curb from the west side sorry, east side of Middle Road, because they came across from the east side again and shot across Quarry, but East Badano, it's called at the bottom of the street and turns into Badano. <coughs> so how are you gonna do yeah. that? Okay. I mean, I think it's straight shot all the way up the roads, the two roads, so, um, I don't know, it's your call though, because the way it is, they're, they're probably 100, 150 feet apart, those two stretches, should we yep. be, should we be doing from, you know this one this parallel to that parallel and call it instead of being again zebra in a road and it kills me to see roads with little patches going across and should we be just doing that 150 foot block across middle road I from one trench to the other do, if you're going to do the streets up i would do that block correct because on middle road so it's a bigger portion of middle road correct. being done correct you want to do so it that's going to tie into them streets going up so them are done you know what i mean them streets coming in we're gonna have to you know tie into them later it'll be all tied in there's one thing I, I would do it now yeah I right. it think it was last nice. a lot longer that way put it out put it out a bit that way Dan. Yeah. measure yeah. it and remember they went pretty far on north anthony they went all the way over to henry the top of henry okay now get all the measurements so you can see where they dug it all up and that's all on them curb to curb and same thing with henrietta curb to curb because it was a paved road okay thank you is there a motion to have Mr. Minot put that out to bid? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so Eversource now has a review of matters presented. You have a, you're looking for permits for Randall Street, Hotley Street, Kendrick Street. We already discussed Anthony Street. So Randall, just for the board's um, knowledge, Randall, Hotley, Kendrick are the three last streets on Nye's Lane on the right hand side of the road. Um, I guess I'm going to start the discussion first, Anthony, while we're on dissatisfaction of Eversource. Is nobody ever told myself or Mr. Kelly or members of this board 
that Nye's Lane was going to be a full closure for the amount of time that that road's being done. We have some, I know I've gone my number of complaints of people that use that. It's a main thoroughway through the town of Cushion and we only have Nye's Lane and Peckham Road to get in and out from the middle road side other than going down middle road. I've got a number of complaints as I travel through the Birch Street area um, and the Tabor Street area of traffic and you know people going through there and large trucks taking the wrong they apparently they can't follow a detour sign and then you have large trucks turning into side streets where they're getting jammed up and running over people's lawns my question is, is why is nice lane closed that was never discussed with the board or myself or mr kelly to close on a major artery um so to help better answer that question i have uh gene rich is our construction supervisor if i can have sure one. yeah Miss, you can come to the podium and introduce yourself, sir. I'm uh, Jim Rich. I'm a gas construction supervisor, Weber Source. Been working in the area about five years. Haven't been working in the Kushner since I did the that earlier section you're talking about, uh, Myrtle, middle uh, off of Middle Road, mm -hmm. about 2020. We did that. Uh, Nice Lane is a uh, particularly narrow road, a lot narrower than we're usually uh, working with. Uh, we are trying to take up as less room as we can just to get the residents in and out with a excavator and a uh, full dump truck. So we're only taking up one lane to do the work. Uh, otherwise, would require putting the spoils into the other lane. It's just it's a it's it's a much more narrow road than you would expect for a, a major thoroughfare. There's just physically we just don't know any other way to. Do it to keep a lane open. We do have enough space to get the residents into the driveways on that side, and then when the trench is open, we have plates available to put across the trench so people can get into the driveways that way. But there's no, there's no breakdown lane. There's no there just isn't room really to keep it, it's safely open for through traffic. So you have a major problem that is all the, yeah. the residents on this side of my town, okay? Because We've had a conversation with Anthony about doing Wing Road, and that's a larger stretch of road, okay? Mm. And, and Wing Road, if you're lucky, might be a foot or two wider than Nice Lane, if you're lucky. So uh, there is no way in hell Eversource is gonna close down Wing Road, I can tell you that right now, I mean, we're, we're, we're gonna be burned. Mm. So that's a major problem, and that's one that you have on your radar to do is Wing Road, because we've had that discussion already with Anthony. Yep. So when you close in Nye's Lane using that as an excuse, then what does that tell me? It tells me that you plan on closing Wing Road, and there's no way in hell you can close down Wing Road. There's way too many people that live down that road that to be happened. telling them to go all the way to Peckham Road and loop yourself around. Mm -hmm. And at the rate your contractors are moving, you're lucky to do 100 feet a day you're looking at over a month's closure never gonna happen my friend so hmm. here we go again we got another problem right you're gonna be on nice lane at guess the way I'm watching that project slowly move basically 100 feet a day you're gonna be there for at least two to three more weeks before you get up to Randall Street that you're asking for permission to get into now so you're closing down a major artery for over a month that's not acceptable in my opinion we did have a traffic plan the chief went over with us about moving through that neighborhood but it's not going to work for the big trucks also so i just i don't know how we can let them come into that split after randall and and come down there we have to keep those big trucks off off of that and we can get the residents moving in and out but I just don't know how we're going to get big trucks like you were talking about and then if they come down there at all. I don't know if I'm concerned about a half dozen trucks that need to go to those businesses. They can take an alternate route, right? The bigger trucks, the 18 wheelers. I'm just saying, you know, regular people that are using the road, it's a high volume road. Um, and it's a massive inconvenience to the residents of a cushion for you folks to be shutting down the road. Is there so, it's not a little side street where it's just, you know, me and 10 of my neighbors that live on it that is being disturbed by that closure of the road that's a different story right we understand that but on a major road like nice lane i don't i don't i'm not particularly happy about having that road closed of course i don't know the particular layout of the area but i could we could get with the chief and 
if we can come up with the traffic plan. I, other than that, I don't. I'm not, I'm not from the area. I really. I, is I there any like? To. Is there any relief on some of the side streets to store some of the equipment to make maybe alleviate some room on Nice Lane or no? It, it's it's not a matter of, a, of the equipment. Unfortunately, it's, it's when the trench is open. Gotcha. That we're right up against it. I got, I got one plan. You guys are using a backhoe instead of an excavator. A backhoe cannot swing all the way around, or an excavator you can swing all the way 180 and dump it into a truck. You don't have to have the truck on the side. You can swing right around and dump it into yeah. it. Or a backhoe, you can only go side to side. Correct. And yeah. you guys are using a backhoe, not an excavator. Uh, if you did have an excavator, an excavator out there. there. If, if you had an excavator, you could cut that down one way with the work you guys are doing. You're not deep, so you don't get that much fill coming out of there. But all right. that's the other done. thing, are they going to be able to handle <coughs> two way traffic? Though? Way, well, I, when I went down, mm -hmm. I didn't even see a police officer, to tell you the truth, when I went by there, oh. uh, when they hit the water pipe. But that's, uh, uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're that's not a cop. We're not in control over that. Yeah. We, we, we asked for them. We just yeah. No, I know. I understand that too. I deal with the same, yeah. same thing. But we so have flaggers, but do, you want, do we want flaggers responsible for two way traffic? I, I don't know how well these guys are vetted. It's funny because our police contract doesn't allow flaggers. So that brings up a whole other conversation that we would be having with our police chief, right? Yeah, that was, yeah. We, so, and when I showed up, I think it was last Friday, at 5 p.m. you were still on the road. And there was a, a gentleman from the sheriff's department. And he was right out where the project's happening. And then the flagger was sitting in his pickup truck. And I drove right by him. He didn't even know I drove right by him. So your flag is not doing it any kind of a job. That was a well, joke. That's why we I'm like, yay for him. That's why we prefer officers. And, and you know, the flag is, they, don't, they, don't, they should have radios and communicate if they were passing traffic, like stop, go. You know, I've seen it in Dartmouth. They get the little signs, they turn it around and say stop. The other guy flips it around and says go. And they're in, in sync. They're doing it in Dartmouth, but they're not doing it in the cushion. It. And that's a pretty narrow road over where the UPS facility is all in Dartmouth. So. They're managing it there in Dallas much better than what you're managing here in a cushion it, and that's where it drives me up a wall. Well, I'm listening to a country. lot of aggravated people, and I get it. And then, what do I tell those people that are aggravated about this? Uh, I don't even know what to say to them. It's, there's nothing I can say to them. It's not like it's my team, and I can have a conversation with them and tell them, "Hey, Dan, you know, what are you using a backhoe for?" Right? Like he just made that valid point, right? If you had that mini excavator over there, you can be swinging that thing 360 degrees and staying in your lane. Not with the backhoe. It's just it's it, you gotta you gotta do something different. We can get excavator out there. I mean, you really. I think there's a way, I and mean, I understand there's a lot of police officers with this police reform act, and a lot of our police officers, not only here in the town of Cushman, but everywhere, when they get put out for the details, they're burnt out. They've done a lot of details, a lot of construction going around everywhere, right? So it, it you know they they're burning out too. So I get it. Sometimes you just can't find two officers to do a certain detail, but. You know, maybe you folks at Eversource need to say, hey, maybe we don't have six things going at once. If we're going to do it, we need to do it right for this project here. We can't close that road down the way we have it closed down. Maybe you shut down one of the other projects, and then you will have two offices that can communicate via radio. Go, let them go, stop, this and that, and, and it can work out. I just think that everybody's everywhere right now trying to get things done. I get it. A lot of people are short staff no matter what industry you're in, but, mm -hmm. you know, so it takes you three years to do something instead of two years to do something. But I think, you know, from my perspective as a select board member, I'm here to keep my residents happy, right? And it, it's become extremely difficult with everything that's going on. No, it, all, all concerns, well heard. So we meet weekly on a Wednesday. We're going to take all this back, meet with the gas construction team, managers as well as the maintenance team and try to figure out some new options and be back in touch with if we can't figure out a new option on Lies Lane, try the excavator route, see how that works out. We'll we'll try to think outside the box for Wink if we if that comes up in twenty twenty four. Talking to the flagger contractor also. It was it was that's a bit right. embarrassing when I drove and I'm, no, I'm in a pickup truck. Not I'm not in a little passenger car, you know, a little Volkswagen beetle where I can sneak by people, right? Or a mini Cooper. It's like I'm in a pickup truck and I just right by him and he's sitting there like this. We you are paying for it. Yeah, we had to use them last year in Fairhaven, it was more than frustrating. It was so gentlemen, I don't know if uh, Dan, what do you how do you feel about the permits for Randall? 
Again, Hotley is a brand new road. Mr. Minaj just did that. So if you're gonna open up Hotley, that's a 100% repave on your dime. Randall, it's a short stem of road. Randall, it's it's only 150, 150 feet of road, 200 feet the most, yes, right? Yeah. I would say let's hold off on this stuff and just see if there's some improvement. We've been meeting in a couple of weeks. Right. What? You don't want to wait till that smoke clears and see if these would they come back? Yeah, actually, I, I'm, I'm going to heed that advice from Selectman Wonar and <laughs> say we're going to hold off on these permits, Anthony, and, and until Eversource figures out the, the flow of money and a better response to allocating funds to projects. And I really think that you need to communicate with, with whoever's in charge that, you know, you go in, you pull a permit. When you're done, you should be closing that permit. Is that done right now? Kath, do you know if that's been done? No, we accept So you're not that. notified after, after they pull a permit, they, they complete it. the job, they don't notify the town saying, hey, we're done with that trench work, close the permit. No. So that should be part of the process, Anthony so that we have a date of permit being closed and then there's a, a period of time where there's an allotment of time for the road to settle and when we get funding from that road. Right, Dan? I agree, yeah. Agree, Cap? Absolutely. Yeah, understood. Clock starts ticking. Permit closed is your clock. Yep. We'll, okay. we'll take it back and we'll, we'll uh, make the, do our best to make the necessary adjustments. But Taking the feedback on um, a few other matters from Mr. Kelly. We want closure on yeah. what Mr. Menard has been trying to deal with and communicating. And I've seen some emails from them. This has been going on, I think, since April. Yep. That's unacceptable. No, I, I agree. From your staff. Right? He's a DBW director. He has a responsibility to this board. We have a responsibility to our residents, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's very difficult for us to hold those duties when it's an outside source right. impacting <clears throat> that, right? So I think we, we we got better with communication and then it seemed to go to hell in a handbasket because Eversource was still getting their permit, so it was kind of like, yeah, whatever, I'll cushion it, but uh, that's gonna stop, okay. right? And we need to get back to better communications. I think that's really what this dialogue is all about. Um, <clears throat> and we end up with a better result for our residents. So. Understood. Mr. Mr. Chairman, do yes, you want uh, us to schedule a meeting with Anthony, Dan, and staff here, and, and yourself or any representative of the board next week be before the two weeks of when we come yeah, back? That's fine. I've been meetings. doing it right along with you and, and Dan and stuff like that, looking at these approvals. So um, if it warrants a conversation prior to that, um, sure. so that we could you want to get back when provide the board when yeah, you've I resolved your problems so we can have the meeting yeah we can revisit this in uh next week yep all right Dan, when you when you do the permits can can you add a clause to the permit where it's, it's it, it it demands a closure date and a notification to the dbw of closure date Yep. So that needs so to be filled in, right? So it's signed, yeah. You know, we can see that, but I hate to interrupt, but could we actually have, Eversource has no problem with their staff sending me permits all the time. Can't they send me a permit, Anthony, when you are done, and you can say we're done on Nyes, then our staff can go out and look at Nyes and say, how did they leave it? Does it look good? And then we all can sign off to Selectman and Dan, that yes, we agreed this section is now closed and done, and the clock starts. Yeah, we Just did. if So it's almost like two permits, so you give me one for Nyes for the whole road then give me one when it's done. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, no, we, absolutely. So we have to, you know, Robin and the group that I work with, a great group there at Eversource that get yeah. permits. I don't see why they can't do a closed permit, too. Yeah, we can work Ke out. Mr. Kelly's got a comment. Can we also have a spreadsheet from uh, Eversource permits that applied, open, closed, and then when the funding's delivered? I can actually do that internal. But I mean, if they send it to us, mm -hmm. then we can verify it. Mm -hmm. Sure. I'll take that back to uh, Gas Plan and we'll work on it. I think it's a good idea, Kat, that you get some kind of a closure mm -hmm. permit with Dan so that Dan can go out when Eversource says we're done. It's his responsibility as DBW director to get out there and make sure that everything's in good standing before we actually do the closing of the permit, right? If Mr. Minot has a problem with it, 
he can notify the board or yourself and it needs to be corrected whatever the issues are within 30 <coughs> days or whatever it may be and Dan would be responsible for closing that perm trench and permit Does that sound better Dan yep so cities and towns can do this with our permits on both gas and electric side you guys can condition the permits back so it's maybe it's part of the process too when a permit comes in before you guys sign off on it just put that in the notes so this way when it goes back into the system everybody knows about it internally at every source so it's going to come back with notes from Dan saying this permit when the job is done this permit must be notified closed back to the town this way it creates a formal process so it, it should be conditioned that way that's what I'm saying yep. put something in the, yep. in the permit right. application right yep. that has specifications right. of what needs to be done not just yeah we'll give you the permit to go cut the road 300 feet yep. okay, okay. That will be part of the discussion next week of the process. It's fine. Yeah. All right. So we're going to hold off on future any future permits until we rectify past problems sure. in funding. Understood. Okay. Yep. All right. Anything else from Eversource while you're here? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I have 27 cities in town. I have, so I have, I do have place. something, yeah. on, but it's on the electric side, and, and I'll have to take that up with you because we don't, I don't have it on the agenda. So we'll put it on the next agenda. We'll take up that. Sure. It's on the electrical side, though. Okay. So, okay. Good. Dan, anything yeah. else to add? Nope. Electric should be good. You guys put it out to bid. Mm -hmm. See yep. what we come in at and all that stuff over there. Yep. Um, and don't forget to sign on Anthony Street five days prior, as long as we get confirmation from Murray Reclamation yep. or whatever they are. Yep. We get over there and do that. We'll put up the sign five days in advance. Mm -hmm. so we'll send letters as well. We always put letters out. Can't hear you. We got a letter already made up, so we'll put the letters out as well. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Kath. Thank Thanks, you. Stan. Thanks, Anthony. No problem. Thank you. All right. <coughs> so, all of those are being held up. Old business. Mr. Kelly, I'm going to turn this over to you. It's got to do with the uh, Massachusetts Strategic Health Group that we just um, got in involved in. You want to just brief the board? Mr. Chairman, uh, we voted and we became a participant, a full participant, with the Mass Strategic Health Group, and especially in light of increased, uh, uh, various increased programs that are available to both our employees and retirees. Uh, because of the increase in the number of participants, both full participants and limited participants. It was advised to the health group by their attorney to just redraft the participation agreement. Primarily, it's protecting uh, towns like us that are full participants versus the limited participants, where the limited participants wouldn't be able to leave and take any money out of the trust fund. Uh, as you can see, uh, it started out that there were three participants originally. Now it's up to 14 full participants and uh, they have five limited participants. So I, need, I just need a motion to, in effect, <coughs> authorize the town of Akushnet to participate as a full participant in the group, which you've already voted in the past, but under this new participation agreement. Correct. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize the town of Akushnet to participate as a full participant in the Massachusetts Strategic Health Group and its employee health insurance and associated insurances program, Medicare program, and retiree health insurance and associated insurances program to execute the agreement for joint negotiation and purchase certain insurance coverages. This is amended and restated effective July 1st, 2023 and to appoint the town of Akushnet town administrator or his or her successor or appointee as the plan administrator on behalf of the town subject to advice and direction of the board of selectmen. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, 
So thank you. So the board knows the appointed uh, plan administrator is the assistant treasurer collector. That is correct. And there is an opt-out provision in that <coughs> in that healthcare group. I read through most of yes. that long, boring stuff, but I did <laughs> read through a lot of it. Um, there is an opt-out. Correct. Know, it's got to be by I think January first of the calendar year, and there's a process that takes place to be able to opt out of it. But um, for right now, it's uh, saved the town of Cushion quite a bit of money to opt in. So and uh, actually, not only has it saved the town quite a bit of money, it's given our retirees uh, access to vision and dental plans that they didn't have before. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Ready? Motion was made and seconded. All those were in favor? Aye. Motion right. passed. Buzzards Bay Conservation Restriction Revision Long Plain Forest. So uh, I think that's like 62.81 <coughs> acres, if I read all that correctly as well. Um, Mr. Kelly, I thought we already voted the conservation restriction. You did. This is uh, the fact that uh, the Registry of Deeds wanted a different form. So that's why wow. it's to move and approve, the, uh, approve and execute the revision of the the conservation it's in the format that the registry of deeds want it's exactly the same as the one you did before correct is there a motion i move to approve and execute the revision of the conservation restriction from rochester land trust inc and accepted by buzzards bay coalition inc for long plain forest as in the public interest second all those in favor aye, aye. motion passes <coughs> all right so do we again Mr. Vaz in our office, the administrative assistant, myself and Ms. Labonte have been working on cleaning up some appointments on the appointment list with better dates of expiration. Um, it's kind of been neglected in the past, so we're just trying to put everybody on the same page. We have to um, appoint Kathy Murray um, for the Community Preservation Committee, and the date of expiration is 6-30-2024. Third motion. Motion to appoint Kathy Murray. Second. All those in favor? Aye. And then we have some for, it says Council on Aging, but is this the trust, Mr. Kelly? Uh, I believe this is the trust, right? The, uh, cons this is the Council on Aging Board of Directors or something like that? Board of Directors and uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I know in the past the town has appointed Heather Chu as the director uh, to the Council on Aging, but that's not proper she's the director they're there the, the supervisor of the director uh the advisory arm so she really shouldn't be sitting in that chair okay so we'll just hold that one for now and figure that one out the other two should be appointed so is there a motion to appoint daniel smith uh with an expiration date of 6 30 25. so moved second all those in favor? Aye. And then you have Joan Howland with an expiration of appointment at 6-30-2026. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. And then we have one for the Historical Commission, John Lassen, with an expiration of 6-30-2025. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Hopefully that most of our appointments are cleaned up from good expiration dates. Mr. And Chairman, just to give you a heads up, I appreciate you, Tom, Pam, and everybody working on that. Because uh, it makes it a lot easier for us every year. Yep, thank you. All right, new business, uh, Blaine Square, sign presented by um, Brad Fish. I don't see Brad here. Are you going to take up the one-day liquor license? I don't know. What is that one? I, I must need a new agenda. Ah, I don't have that on my agenda, but that's okay. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Kelly. So we'll jump. Yeah, uh, we're going to. No, I got Bob's right now. I'll just use his, and then after that, everything should follow suit, hopefully. One day liquor licenses review of matters presented. So this is uh, Poptoberfest for Diamond in the Rough on Middle Road. 
Um, they did it last year. It was a very successful program. Um, the scene real lady attended last year. Um, and now they have a individual JK catering. Um, it's like a uh, beer truck, which is pretty cool. There's a bunch of them going throughout the country. Um, and I guess they're going to be here as well. So they're looking for a one day liquor license. Um, and I believe we have copies of their insurance policies on file. Everything's all set. I know the same great lady. Safe, sir. Yeah, that's correct. So, is there a motion to approve the one day liquor license? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve a one day wine and malt license for Diamond in the Rough. Servers being Sangria Lady and JK Catering. The location's 211 Middle Road of Cushman. The date's October 1st, 2023. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Uh, outdated agenda. <laughs> it's okay. I have one for you. Because she's been doing such a good job on the minutes. So. I know. I know. It's okay. So, uh, again, we, I don't see uh, Brad here, but it, it's Plain Square is located at the corner of Mill Road and Middle Road, pretty much where we just got done discussing the paving over there. Um, Brad Fish is replacing the existing sign with this new sign and it gives us a demonstration of what the new sign looks like. Um, he's looking for to establish a, a time with the selectmen so that he can have uh, our involvement in the ceremony. So I guess we can just say offer up a motion to approve. Yes. The sign. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I'll move to approve the placement of a sign commemorating the valor and sacrifice of Adrian Blaine and Henry Blaine, who made the ultimate sacrifice in World War I, 1918, serving on the front lines with the U.S. Army. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Now, um, we can just, can we get some dates from Mr. Fish on when he would like to do something? Yes, he wanted to coordinate with you, so you can be part of the too. Sure. So. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. If you could just get some dates and make sure it's good for um, the board. Sure. <coughs> Saturday morning. Um, Saturday mornings usually work. Usually, not this one. Though. Yeah, I'm just saying a Saturday morning. Yeah, Saturday fine, morning. great. Whatever, whatever the pleasure of the board is. All right, and then we have a discussion to to reestablish the cable committee consisting of five members not three members of the right. with annual employments with no alternates so my question to mr kelly is um, we, we had a cable committee years ago mr catino the town administrator abolished that under the board of selectmen and made the board of selectmen really the cable committee so i i don't understand what, what are we trying to achieve uh i couldn't find a vote to show actually that the transfer was made from the cable commission when that was d uh, dissolved to the board of selectmen under the catv agreement you need a commission whether it's the board of selectmen or you reestablish it, it yeah. either one has to be done so and we need a vote on record okay um do we need, if we reestablish, because it's it was, so what we did was we dissolved at the Board of Selectmen, because that's a, like a special revenue fund, the cable reserve, and that's under the control of the Board of Selectmen, always will be, right, the budget. If we want to reestablish a committee, um, I have no problems with that. And if we want to go to a five-member board, maybe we, you know, obviously it's going to be people that are like camera operators and people that are in the uh, everyday activity, maybe have, the town administrator as an appointment and maybe one member of the board of selectmen i think it would probably do we need to if you did it that way the composition set up that way do you really do you don't need to be posting open meetings and because it doesn't or do you have to still do all of that uh you should have the open meeting uh the real duty of this commission or committee is to every decennial uh, time that you're redoing your cable agreement, they have to be involved in the negotiations. Yeah, we just got done wrapping that up a few years back on the yeah. Ms. Hebert, when she was here as a town administrator, we reestablished the committee, we got through that, but I remember 
Um, I believe the appointments when we reestablished the committee to negotiate that contract, which ultimately came back to the board of select with final approval, um, there was an expiration on that reestablishment of those committee members, right? So it was basically when the contract, you know, was negotiated, it re redissolved that cable committee. So I don't know. I've asked for comments from the board. Is is it something that we think that we need to reestablish, or do we just have ourselves as the cable committee as we kind of really? I know Mr. Kelly doesn't have anything in formal record of the Board of Selectmen, but... If we have a vote for the Board of Selectmen, especially now that we're converting to fiber and what is issues on broadband mm -hmm. and uh, coverage, uh, you need a committee, whoever it is. Yeah, sure. I get it. We're, we're, we're I'm done with that. I mean, we've talked about it. You know, the internet service in town in certain parts of town with Xfinity is awful. I don't know if people feel the same way I do about it. I mean, I don't know the last I do. time. Back in the day when <laughs> I do. Comcast, we used to get a community representative in here every once in a while to talk about these issues, so maybe we should bring that person in, um, establish a committee, but we should, you know, I know Town of Fairhaven is looking at town-wide broad, broadband. They've reached out to us. I think it's gone above and beyond cable TV. It's just a, an overall approach to uh, you know internet and all the stuff that people are providing I mean I think now there's so many competition is no longer necessarily an issue because you've got YouTube TV you know you've got all these other things for TV but now the internet's the problem where before it was the um, cable TV now it's actually how you receive these streaming services so um, however we get there whether it's a committee we're fine with that just want people to lean into it or if not or can do it. Yeah. As long as a committee, I'm okay with it. Somebody to somebody to take them to task if we need to. Do we, well. The, I think I think that's the question at hand. Do we, do we want to? Do, do does the board of selectmen just want to continue being you know the so-called cable committee, um, or do we want to establish a cable committee consisting of maybe five members with yearly appointments? If there's not a lot of things that need to be done, and I think that the hard, you know, the hard decisions are going to come down to this board anyways. Do we just want to stay in effect, let the board of selectmen be that committee, and stay in that position, or do we want to move to, you know, you know, obviously you're going to have your people that have always been part of the cable crew as members, and then possibly you just, if we did three of them, and then the town administrator and one member of the board of selectmen to deal with whatever needs to be dealt with it's all going to come back to roost to the board of selectmen anyway so right. do we want to waste people's times on a committee to deal with a few ins and outs or do we just want to take on those challenges head on how about we start i mean this isn't something we need to do like immediately but i would say let's start off with getting somebody from xfinity here to come before the board and at least we can have start a conversation about what's going on with internet service in town and good idea you know, what their plan is all right we're gonna hold off one though mr Wolf has a place. Uh, mr chairman can, yes sir can we uh have a motion to have the board of selectmen for the time being sure in case we have any uh sure uh, issues that we have to do sure sure is there a motion to have the board of selectmen act um in the capacity of the uh cable Advisory committee. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. You want me to appoint myself now? You just appointed the board of selectmen. Okay, boss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, part time EMS schedule and work policy. We have Chief Fallon patiently sitting in the audience. Welcome, Chief Fallon. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, so basically, I brought this forward. Um, part of what I've been trying to do since I was appointed is just to make sure that your fire and EMS agency runs smoothly, without any hiccups, without any issues. Um, we've been at full staff for quite some time now where everything's chugging along. Um, this is just a policy to help those that we have on the part-time EMS side. Um, 
we have approximately 19 to 20 part-time EMS employees. Um, this will just standardize a practice so that um, we can make sure that everybody's committed to the town, all the oars are in the water, and everybody's pulling their fair share of weight. Um, and just to uh, make sure that trucks are staffed when they need to be so that we don't drop any of the balls that we have in the end. It looks good. I like it. Gentlemen, comments, questions from Mr. Fallon? I think it's pretty straightforward. Appreciate you uh, putting something in writing so everybody understands the uh, rules of the game, right? That's pretty much what you're doing. Absolutely. Um, and again, keeping the team together, which, in, which is extremely important from my perspective. So thank you, Chief, for putting this together. Anything, gentlemen? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Chief, like always, every time you stand up and hand this paperwork to read through, it's always well thought out, well written, and usually handles a lot of problems. And I just want to extend the appreciation, as always, that you're doing an excellent job. Thank you. The town appreciates you. Thank you. And you didn't kill me with your burger this weekend either. I try not to. Perfectly cooked cheeseburger. I got a little you experience. didn't give him the right season <laughs> one, did you? <laughs> Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, only need a motion. The other motion? Uh, motion to approve the policy presented by the fire chief. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, sir. I would uh, ask the uh, board's uh, permission to have the chief talk to you about his vehicle and then talk to you about the uh, a worry that he and I have down the road a piece coming up the East Coast and not the one that's coming well, well, there's, right now. There's the two. There's one the one days away the, and one just after that. Yeah. Um, Quick so um, update on the storms, I guess, is what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. But other than that, I don't there's nothing on the agenda um, so first thing real quick mr. Kelly mentioned the road work on a cushion at Avenue while I was sitting back there while you were discussing everything with Eversource the city put a, uh, a notification out they are delaying the rest of the cushion at Ave road work to a time to be determined and they will notify at that time so cushion at Ave will be back open again tomorrow uh, just just so the board knows they notified us yesterday at five o'clock <laughs> yeah, um, I I, um, I don't understand how people they just stop projects all over the place and yet we don't complete any of them it's, it's so disturbing to me why they do these things I mean you just set out to do it a certain area of, of the city or the town mm -hmm complete the task at hand and then move to the next location and do it again but to, to just be ripping sidewalks and roads and it's a it's a nut house up there we just talked about not having details at nice lane they had a cushion and avenue imagine that how busy a cushion and avenue is um i mean it's just like a free fall nobody knows what to do you got trucks in the middle of the road you can't even see around them you got traffic coming it's just it's 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 ludicrous that this is actually occurring today um, in the real world but hopefully nobody's ever going to get hurt from it so all right and then just on the storm front um, myself and deputy director ed karen for emergency management we've been keeping close watch on hurricane lee just barreling its way up through the atlantic right now uh, best guess is we're going to feel the impacts of it sometime on saturday um, right now we're expecting some periods of rain Saturday from anywhere from about 6 a.m. to midnight. Uh, winds pretty steady between 15 and 20 with gusts into the 40s. That's best guess right now. As the week progresses, we'll get a better handle on it. And I'll keep in touch with Mr. Kelly and everybody um, through Facebook and, and whatever messaging devices we need to get a hold of them. Um, the bigger concern that we're watching, and it's way too soon to tell, but there's supposedly an unnamed storm that just came off the coast of Africa um, that all indications right now show it being a direct hit somewhere from the Hudson Valley to Cape Cod. So we'll keep an eye on that one as we'll well. We'll worry about that one the time. We'll keep an eye on that one as well. Um, and um, I know it's not on the agenda, but I did provide 
um, Mr. Kelly's uh, some follow-up uh, on what you and I had discussed um, and you all have a copy of that for your perusal at, at your convenience Thank when you. we get to those conversations. Appreciate it, Chief. Thank, Thank you. you, Chief. All right. Uh, COVID policy, oh. gentlemen, we, it's, it's, it says draft, and it's probably a good thing that it says draft. That's I, the beginning, Mr. Chairman. What are, I'm looking for input from the board, how do you want me to go, and we need to uh, also have, uh, I've asked, gone through about eight or ten municipalities and none address uh, the policy to people who have been at large events and then come back to work. And I think we need some wording on that. Mm -hmm. So gentlemen, uh, we, can, we can pass over this. I mean, hopefully, you know, COVID-19 is around. Um, there's some other virus going around. I know I got it. Um, and it's not COVID. Um, and a number of residents that I've spoken to have the similar symptoms that I've had and it's not COVID, which is pretty f funky to me. But I got it. Um, well, it is what it is. I think that um, the board can take a look at this draft policy and maybe speak with Mr. Kelly on the side note of, you know, some of the protocols I think we need to put in place as a town. Um, I don't think that this draft does it. No, um, but I think we need to at least have that conversation with Mr. Kelly, what's important to us, and put that policy in place. All right, so no votes needed. Uh, interim treasurer collector resignation letter. Please be advised that my final day of employment with the town will be September 28, 2023. I am happy to have been able to help out the town in the treasurer collector's office during this interim period, and I wish only the best for the town of Kushna in the future. Jacqueline Boudreau. So again, we were fortunate to have her in um, for a short period of time, but. All cast reconciliation is up to date, and we're uh, in effect, the, uh, the office as far as tax title, cast for Reconciliation. Reconciliation. I tripped over my own tongue. <laughs> is uh, a good. Uh, I had a meeting with Todd and Jackie, uh, and we feel very confident that going forward we can. Uh, we're all caught up, and we can keep it going on an even keel. Uh, she has agreed to be available. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the October 2nd transfer of the OPEB funds out of PRIM and into PARS mm -hmm. so that we can make sure that that goes seamlessly. Excellent. Good news. So it's unfortunate um, where the work is gone, that's the question to ask, right? It doesn't matter whether you're in a municipality private businesses. I've talked to people all over the place. I'm sure you gentlemen see it all over the place, right? It's just, I can't answer that question of where all the work has gone. It's, it's incredible to see what's happened in society. You know, I watch MMA, which is Mass Municipal <coughs> Association, with all the job openings that are out there. And there's just a number of different towns, um, not so many from around this area, but looking for help. There's some towns that have five, six, seven, eight positions open yeah. in one community. It's really um, crazy what's happening. Um, and again, it's not just in town government or city government, right? It's everywhere, no matter what, where you go, you see you know, now hiring signs yep. and things of the like. So I don't know when that's gonna break. Or we, uh, Mr. Chairman, and through you to the board, Todd and I interviewed one person today uh, for full time and we're into our interviewing another person at the end of next week. Very good. I know that we're still out there in that advertisement, so hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have something. So uh, could we is there, do you need a motion on there? Motion will accept with regret. Second. There you go. <laughs> To move to, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the September 28, 2023 resignation of interim treasurer collector 
Jacqueline Boudreau and to thank her for her service to the town of Akushna and citizens. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Now comes the uh, kick in the pants for me, um, just because of Mr. Hassett. He's an incredible um, individual. Um, it says, after considerable thought in accordance with my services agreement with the town, I have decided to conclude my interim town accountant services by the end of September. Over the past 16 months, we have made significant improvements, getting the office in a better position to move ahead. Going forward, the staff is well positioned to maintain and improve operations. Please know that should the new town accountant require mentoring or assistance, I can provide those services as needed. My time with the town has been challenging and rewarding, at times quite interesting, in many ways. Sincerely, Todd Hassett. Um, just an incredible individual Mr. Hassett has been for this town. Um, he's done it longer than I thought he would do it for. Um, super intelligent individual, knows municipal finance inside and out. Um, if I had my way, I'd hire him in a heartbeat as my permanent town accountant, but unfortunately he's at a point in his life where that's what he does for a living now. He just kind of does it on the side for municipalities he's been working. He's done it actually for three municipalities um, at the same time, Akushna being one of them. So um, he's just a phenomenal individual and uh, he'll be missed for sure. Um, but I'm confident in, you know, the direction the board um, is going to go into the future. I, I'm, I'm sure that we're going to make decisions that uh, sometimes we don't always have to, we don't make, you know, the decisions aren't always easy that this board has to make, but when we make those decisions, we're usually pretty successful at that decision-making process, and I'm sure that that's going to be the case moving forward um, for our town accountant's position. So, uh, <coughs> with that said, is there a motion to accept? Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the September 30th, 2023 resignation of interim town accountant Todd Hassett. <coughs> Excuse me. And to thank him for his service to the town of Kushnet and its citizens. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Uh, new appointment candidates. So we have a citizen's interest form. Eric James for the bicycle committee. Um, Pretty straightforward. Is there a motion to appoint <coughs> James to the Bicycle Committee? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Next we have a individual. It's to the Board of Selectmen, Kevin Smith. He uh, would like to express his interest in obtaining a seat on the Board of Appeals. It is my understanding that there may be a seat still open at this time. I am a firm believer in regulations that all residents are subject to due process. Please consider me for the seat if it is still open. And there is a opening. There's an opening for an alternate on the Zoning Board of Appeals. So is there a motion to appoint Kevin Smith to the Zoning Board of Appeals as an alternate? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Mr. James. I see him in the audience. Oh. And congratulations sure. to Mr. Smith. Um, you just both have to go to Ms. Labonte, the town clerk, get sworn in, OK? OK. And there's another one from a Michael Miklowski. Please accept this letter of interest for the constable position for the town of Akushna. I've been an <coughs> Akushna resident for nine years, a city of New Bedford constable for 12 years. He has approximately 16 years in combined law enforcement and security work, including my time with New Bedford as a constable. For these reasons, I feel though I possess the skills and knowledge to be a good fit for this position. Thank you for your time. So is there a motion to appoint Michael McClowski um, as a constable? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And next we have a letter of interest to the Board of Selectmen from an Eric Chu from the Finance Committee. It says, please consider this my letter of interest in volunteering with the cable department. I feel my IT background and experience assisting with the town's fiber installations projects positions me well to be helpful to the team. I understand that by being a member of the Finance Committee, I will be unable to get paid for any time in the department and that my time is strictly volunteer voluntary. 
So, the question that I have, unfortunately, is under the town charter, under the town charter, Mr. Kelly, um, a finance committee member can only serve in an advisory capacity. So, I don't know what we're looking for here. Uh, like, I, I thought yes, he would make a great addition to the team with his IT background, um, as well as because of the transitioning out of Nick from cable, op, you know, camera operator. Mr. Chairman, the fact that this board has decided to uh, be also be the cable advisory committee, there should be no problem with Mr. Chu volunteering as in an unpaid capacity. Okay. So I'm just concerned about the verbiage in the charter. The I was a finance committee member. He can't serve on uh, the advisory committee. That's correct. But I just want to protect Mr. Chu in the integrity of this board by understanding what the town charter says. Um, so, I mean, if we say that he's going to be doing X, Y, Z in an advisory capacity, I'm 100% on board. I just, we got to be careful of, of the duties of if we appoint Mr. Chu to the cable, I guess it's not a cable committee, it's a cable board or whatever, cable. No, there is. No, how fast we're doing it now. You, you what are we, what, so what's, what will we be if, I mean, Mr. Chu wants to help out and volunteer. Yeah, Mr. Chu, you want to go to the, <coughs> the podium yeah, and just see? He can help out and volunteer because <coughs> there's no possibility of him being a member of the committee because the committee is that's, the board that's, of selection. That's fine. I just, I just want to protect Mr. Chu just so you know. Thank you. It's my goal to always try to do my best to protect individuals. Um, from ESA and rumor mills that we have plenty of that function around out in the, as of the social media world that we have. That we do. Right? Um, so, so like basically to, for Jamie's comments about volunteering in town, I'm kind of doing that now with EMA. I mean, I do their IT stuff. You know, I'm not getting paid or anything like that. In fact, I had to stop getting paid when we had COVID funds for the COVID testing and stuff. Um, once I joined the finance committee. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just looking to, um, I don't know if you've noticed the channel 18 slides. Um, I'm, I was previously helping out with that and then I was kind of spoken to about it and said that you really should put this before the board and see, make sure it get on, you know, make it official, um, which is why I'm here before you guys. Well, what I don't want to do is I've had a conversation with some of the folks, right, that is involved in cable. What I don't want to be doing is having somebody put in a position that's taken away somebody else's salary, right? Correct. And that's, I think, the subject matter that came up was all about dealing with bulletin boards and things of the like. Mm -hmm. I, we have members of the cable, I call them committee or whatever it is, the cable team mm -hmm. um, that have responsibilities and being paid for those responsibilities. So I don't want somebody to come in and say, well, I'm gonna take over doing that. That's not what we're here to do, right. um, is to take away somebody else's um, salaries, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be 20 no bucks for doing X, Y, and Z. No, I, if, I know that you could be an asset <coughs> to, the to the town um, because of your IT expertise. Mm -hmm. So I'm all on board with that, Eric. I just don't want there to be conflict of what who somebody's doing and what, from what somebody else is doing. If somebody else is already t has that as a job responsibility, then that stays at that person's job responsibility. It's not mm -hmm. to be taken away. I, I don't know if what we really need is, to be honest with you, is cable operators, camera operators. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know you have an abundant experience, so in the background you could be helping us out, and, and that's great that you can do that from the IT perspective. Mm -hmm. um, but what we really need is cable operators. Camera, I'm, op I'm sorry, camera operators. I've uh, had a discussion with Old Colony, and as of January, they'll be able to provide us with juniors from there. Uh, I don't know the proper terminology, but from their telev television broadcast de uh, department okay. to come and on a co-op basis uh, do two to three of them to do the camera operations and the editing once they do the filming. So as long as they're not taking away responsibilities of people that are currently appointed into those positions, all right? Well, that's the problem. 
Well, we don't need overlap, and what we need is new people. We need camera operators and things of the like. We don't need somebody to come in and start taking over somebody else's job responsibilities and knocking them off payroll. I don't think that's what we're no, here to we, do. No, that wasn't the plan. Okay. Some of the things that you just described is in other people's job descriptions. Yeah, so but we're also going to need adults to supervise them. Okay, I'm just making sure everybody's clear that we're not looking to reinvent the little cable people and how they're being paid and what they're being paid for. They've done, as far as I'm concerned, the folks that we have on staff now have done an incredible job keeping things functioning very well for the town of Christian. I don't want to start knocking people off to go, hey, co op kid, here's your money now. That's You're going to be doing idea. that. It's just, it's, we got to put them where, we, where they're needed, right? Um, that's the goal, at least from my perspective. Gentlemen, any comments on that? I think the so right, as far as <coughs> finance committee goes, this isn't you know like insert name that has nothing to do with you, Eric. I just me personally, I like to see our finance committee members solely focused on finance committee issues, right? Like that's that's the mission. That's the point. I understand that there's times when they a finance committee member will be asked to serve like the golf course committee for instance because there's a financial component to it um, and I think that was done years ago and probably when you think about it may have outkicked its coverage quite frankly because again when you're voting on issues should be unencumbered shouldn't have any you know if a finance committee member sitting on the golf course committee and then they're voting on the budget it's kind of kind of redundant may not make sense but as far as you know I'd like to see people on the finance committee focus just on finance committee issues and not have to worry about, you know, other issues that might come before the finance committee. So that's something I've always felt strongly about. But if there's an opportunity to help out in some capacity, mm -hmm. I think to have you not to have you sit on the sidelines, I think would be not a good thing because if you get something to offer, we should be in the business of trying to promote that. But mm -hmm. in perfect worlds, you know, I'd appreciate, you know, I think finance committee is like a huge responsibility. Right. Right? That's like, you know, that is the show. Mm -hmm. And so they have to, you know, do other issues, other things from a, you know, voting on things that prefer not, but, you know, we'll see how this plays out, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good on a voluntary basis. I mean, wherever we, if, if the cable folks need technology expertise, and he's willing to volunteer himself and helping out like he's done with the fiber optic stuff with Nick, yeah. the technology guy. You know, I'm all for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just, you know, I don't, I think that the, like Selectman Wona saying, if there's conversation pieces in front of the finance committee, he, sh he should recuse himself and just say, hey. You Which know, I have in the past. You, know, you have. If I'm, if I'm involved way. with, you know, like, yeah, whatever it is, EMA, right? Yeah. They're involved there as a volunteer. Thank you very much for volunteering at, at EMA. Um, and you just say, I'll recuse myself and mm -hmm. have a nice day. It keeps him out of the equation and out of the conversation. That's fine. Yeah. So, I mean, whatever we're doing, whatever, Mr. Kelly, if you need Mr. Chu's expertise, I'm, I'm fine with it. You know, I just, I just don't want anybody tampering with other people's jobs. <clears throat> That'd be like me saying, oh, I'm going to hire Mr. Chu to go do DPW stuff, right? You just can't do that stuff. Yeah. So we we'll take away from other people. So I just want to make sure that we're fair across the board. Yeah, I have no intention of taking over anybody's don't, job at all. Don't <laughs> intrude into what's going on with people. Some people get very offended by that. Is you know, hey, I've been doing that for the last five years. You know, you're not touching it. Mm -hmm. um, if if you're asked to do something, then that's a different thing. But you know, you know, you know the rules of engagement, right? Sure. So I don't know if there's an appointment that needs to be had here. Then no, I think it's just that the leisure of the town administrator, really, right, Mr. Kelly, is if you need something IT related done. We can, uh, you can work call Mr. Chu. Out. You can call Mr. Chu and see if he's available to help us out, and you know whatever it may be, or he can mm -hmm. bring recommendations to you as well and say, hey, you know what is what do you think about bringing this to the board and implementing this and things of that. I, I work well, so well work well with uh, Tony, who's did a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. So I'm yep. really yep. tight with him. And, and so now, him do you, out. now do you want to say who Tony is so everybody in Cameraland knows who Tony is, Eric? <laughs> See, and now you brought up an individual. <laughs> <laughs> so, <who's> Tony? <laughs> so can you just please tell us who Tony is now? Tony is the fellow EMA uh, member who's uh, who very 
pretty much single-handedly uh, did a lot of the IT stuff at EMA, and he, uh, he has now been helping out behind the scenes with Nick, with Nick uh, doing some of the high-end stuff that thank you, know, you that I know of. Now everybody knows who Tony is. <laughs> All right, so we don't need uh, anything, Not further. any action on that. Thank you, Mr. Chu, for volunteering your time and your thank services. You. Thank you. So, uh, beautification committee. Street Street Project. So Eric James again. That's of, me. Well, the beautification <laughs> committee would like to start a new initiative to plant trees in town. His idea is to have town residents reach out to the beautification committee if they would like a street tree in front of their property. The committee would purchase and plant the trees. Then the property owners would care for and maintain the trees. And it says he would like to take a thousand bucks from the beautification committee budget to fund that idea. The problem is, is the beautification committee's budget in total is one thousand dollars. So you're out of luck. But if you want to come to the podium, okay. Mr. Yeah. James, and, and talk about your idea and shows or demonstrates a little picture in, in here with some trees going down the side of a street. Um. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, well, right now there's uh, Governor uh, Haley uh, allocated $3 million to the city and towns of Massachusetts for grant money to purchase trees. So I do have an application idea. We can send this in. We have to send a letter of intent by October 1st for, <coughs> for trees. And then you submit your grant in afterwards, your grant proposal. So do we have a grant right now? Y'all right now. <laughs> oh, oh, gee, I'll have the grant right now. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so usually what we do is the department heads usually do their own grant writing. Uh, I mean, I we have several department heads that file for grant mm -hmm. applications on their own. Um, being a department head, if it pertains to the department, um, that's what they do. Okay. So, I mean, if there was something that you had, you know, you needed some help on, I'm sure that Mr. Kelly, through SERPED, we have representatives at okay. SERPED that we thank pay. You. SERPED, um, there's a little bit of money that we pay, the townspeople pay SERPED to help us out with different things. So it's, it's something as simple as a application for some trees I'm sure it would be a pretty simple process for right. right, okay. Sid, I don't know if you know Sydney in our office she's putting her hand up she's willing to help yes. um, and I think it might be a good learning experience for you as well okay, okay thank you uh, yes. see that so don't ever put your hand up against it no you are not in the military don't put your hand up <laughs> so I mean it's something that we can take a look at if you want to leave that with Sydney the, the okay. problem the, the, the questions Eric, you know, I appreciate, um, you know, the gesture, but it's, it, I, I, I don't, don't know how much we would want to be involved with planting trees down the side of the road. And I wrote some notes here. I mean, we need to be careful where we plant trees in the side of roadways because we got storm drains, we got water services, oh. we have sewer services. <coughs> so you can't just stop planting trees. Well on the sides of roads not knowing where any of these kind of services are because obviously once the rooting system starts taking mm -hmm. effect it could have a, an impact on services right, right? people's water services mm -hmm. and things of the like and i would love to think that you if i told you i want a tree out in front of my house along the, the roadway i would love to be able to tell you that yeah i'm always going to take care of that tree but let's be realistic once that tree gets to a certain height I'm not taking care of that tree anymore, right? So well, it takes a couple of years. I uh, understand it takes how long a couple it takes years to, get, to maintain that tree. So the homeowner has to say, okay, or the town. I mean, like New Bedford has uh, a, a forestry department. Mm -hmm. So if you notice the green bags, if you go around New Bedford, all the new plantings have green bags attached to them, the water bags. So they have pumps. It's an expense. It's an yeah. expense at any time. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, for us to do it, for the town of Acushia, they'd have to get a, a watering system, which you can buy one probably used for maybe $500. Goes on a pickup truck, and somebody would have to go buy from DPW or myself. Or I have a pickup truck. I mean, I, I would volunteer to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it's great. Um, we're, we're pulling trees down all the time to build solar fields, right? Which is kind of an embarrassment. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but trees play an important part of our lives, right? Right. Um, I, I get it. I just, you know, I don't, 
I don't know where it would end up leading us to. Right. Um, and again, with the services, the municipal services, where there's municipal services, look, there's probably a lot of little side streets that have trees that are that are rotted and dead, and maybe we can replace those kind of places with trees and, and new plantings. And I, I would just, I think if we're going to get involved in that, I, I would, I wouldn't want to be planting trees that are going to grow and they have the, co the capacity to grow 60, 80 feet tall, right? Because now it becomes a liability. Don't well, you know? they have three trees that grow to a certain size. They, you know, the Revit has three trees. That's what you get. You purchase three trees that aren't going to grow 100 feet down. Right, you right. Know, they're not going to spread out. Right. So, well, I mean, if that's the plan, that's great. You know, and stuff like that. And then, oh, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Pino? I said, oh, look at that. He's, he's acting as a chairman of the board of selectmen. Now, you're pretty good. You want, you want me to go sit down over there? Yes. I'm going to do it. Come on in, buddy. Hey, I mean, he's, 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 all, he's all on board already. He's like, yo, Mr. Kelly. God, Mr. Kelly, you got something. I've been watching you. I've been watching you. I've been watching you. Come on. He's paying attention. <laughs> if you've been watching it, you'd be talking for an hour straight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suggest we also coordinate with the tree warden. Yes. I was, yes, I was going to bring that up. Yeah, Norman. Norman, I mean, you know. And it, Mike McCloskey, our new constable, who's a tree guy, a tree expert. Yes, and, and also you have uh, you have Dig Safe. You have to call Dig Safe. If you know, you get into this, uh, somebody wants a tree, but you call <coughs> Dick. Uh, dig space, uh, dig safe, and they come over and make sure the gas where the gas is, mm -hmm. and the DPW would make sure knows where the water pipes are. So you know, there's a lot to do, but I mean, it can be done. I mean, they do it. Well, I think if you have certain species of trees that don't get carried away in height yes. and in, in depth, right? And right. the rooting system right. isn't one that's mm -hmm. been known to go like 90 feet out, and it's more of one that only goes down six feet or whatever, and they stop. There are tree species that do they that. Can so. Do that. Um, I that. think if we could figure out that, I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. I mean, so uh, that with is subdivisions, that's with subdivisions, we do require, like for instance, in my subdivision, mm -hmm. the, the developer is required to plant some trees. So I'm guessing that there's already stuff that's been approved and vetted yeah. that Whoa. way. You know, so there's a way to do that. And I would say maybe we look at an article at town meeting just for a little, you know, small amount of money. Yeah, and and don't that, have a meeting coming up, right? To thank do you. A little something. Uh, I don't know what's happening with Slocum Street. If you if you're moving forward to to put the resurfacing on Slocum Street. Oh yeah, it's a redevelopment of Slocum Street with a new water main and, and sidewalks. Right. Obviously, the board's exploring that, and we're we're in the process of working on that. They should have been on your street a couple of weeks, three weeks ago. Yeah, I've seen people. Holes. I've seen people, but right. I, that's a, that Slocum Street would be fabulous with trees on it. So that would be a big. If you go up Wood Street. And you see what that does. In Slocum Street last year, it was so hot on that street with that heat that if you had trees there, it would, it would slow people down, slow the traffic down, and clean the air up from over here, mm. from the quarry, that tar, the tar fumes from the quarry. The trees South would, Main Street District would be like the perfect place. The Main Street. The Main Street here, the Main Street are going out that way. Sure. Once, we get, once they put the sidewalks in, it's never going to happen. It's going to be very difficult. Let me well, that's the other thing. You got to be careful if, if, like Slocum Street, if we're going to put in new sidewalks, you got to make sure there's enough area where the rooting system's not yeah, in ten yeah. years going to buckle that. Right. Spend. But this, 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 you know, that's an all that's, that's why I said about the rooting system going down and not. Right. Up. Right. Well, you have your plates go over it. You have plates go over it where the trees going to plant. They pay, you have plates around it. Where the water goes down, it you know it won't disrupt. You. It won't disrupt the, the the sidewalk. I mean, this is all done. This is not this is not rocket science. You know, this has all been done all over the all over the world. Well, now you really do sound like me. It's not, <laughs> rocket, it's not <laughs> rocket science, right? I'm glad somebody else can see it too. <laughs> well, right. Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Anyway, Paul. Three science. Yeah. Okay, we'll start off with the uh, with. Uh, with um, uh, the grant, sure. You know, we we should have a meeting, an article at town meeting to come up with a, a pro little program. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Ooh. All right, very good. Okay, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Yeah, you can. Uh, the okay, I uh, just printed this out. No, <laughs> you can read that so. to yourself. But it's number seven. Instead of yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. so um, <coughs> there's a legal petition. So the letter's written to Mr. Kelly on August 1st, 2023. Resident Dave DeRoche of 30, 1399 Main Street presented the town clerk's office with a citizen's petition to include the following article for submission submission for the upcoming November 6th special town meeting article whatever number it's going to be in accordance with the articles of the Constitution of the Commonwealth the Accushioner Board of Selectmen are hereby directed to petition the general court for passage of the act relative to the Board of Selectmen providing as follows section 1 Notwithstanding any general or special law to the contrary the number of members of the Accushioner Board of Selectmen shall be increased from 3 to 5 the Board of Selectmen shall annually, annually elect a chairperson from among its members. Section 2. At the first annual town election to occur following the passage of this act by the Massachusetts General Court, three selectmen shall be elected. The candidate receiving the highest number of votes in the election shall serve as a three-year term. The candidate receiving the second highest number of votes shall, shall serve two-year term and the candidate receiving the third highest number of votes shall serve a one-year term thereafter as the terms of selectmen expire successors shall be elected for the terms of three years section three this act shall take effect upon its passage or to take any uh, action relative thereto the petition was received and found to be in compliance with mass general law and to relate to article submissions for special town meetings by petition. The certific certification process through the Board of Registrars was finalized on September 8th and deemed as a valid petition. Please accept this letter as official notification. Mr. DeRoche's petition is valid and he has satisfied the Massachusetts general law requirements. The aforementioned article shall be included in a November 6th special town meeting warrant. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A former selectman voted out by the people is now being asked yet or directing the board of selectmen to go to a five member board of selectmen brilliant then he has the audacity of not showing up tonight even more brilliant i i could can't even fathom when i heard this rumor going around that this was being proposed by a former selectman um, it's quite honestly, it's appalling to me. Um, I think it should be appalling to all members of the Board of Selectmen. I think it's basically a vote of no confidence in this Board of Selectmen for doing their job, how we've conducted ourselves over the years. Um, I, it, it's gonna cost taxpayers more money, adding more people to the Board of Selectmen. It's gonna, it's gonna cost more work on our staff, obviously, with five members of the Board of Selectmen. It'll add confusion to the Board. Um, I don't see any upside in this. Um, and again, you were defeated, and now you're asking to go to a five member board of selectmen so you can basically just walk into, back onto this board of selectmen. The people voted you out, Mr. DeRoche, for a reason, okay? Um, but now he's got a petition in front of the townspeople to ask to go to a five member board. Um, I think it's extremely dangerous um, what we're being asked to do. There's no need for a five-member board of selectmen in the town of Akushnit. I, I would say that there would be a need for a five-member board if this board was so disorientated that we couldn't get anything done. I think that this board's done just the contrary to that. Um, we get we get things done, Mr. DeRoche, and, and that's the job of the board of selectmen is to get things done on behalf of the residents of Akushnit. So. Um, for you not even to show up tonight is an embarrassment on itself to put this petition in front of us and not show up and answer some questions, all right? And the reality of it is, gentlemen, is this is extremely dangerous where you think about this, basically Mickey Mouse and Goofy can now be elected to the Board of Selectmen in this first time around, right? That's basically what it is, all right? Um, whoever gets the least amount of votes automatically gets in, but only for one term, and then you're setting it back up. Just so the people at home understand the repercussions of something like this is, sometimes you don't have a lot of people that are interested in running for the Board of Selectmen. 
But then you have really good people that are interested in being on this board of selectmen and doing the job to represent you, the taxpayer and resident of, of the town, as you see in front of you right now, Mr. Hinckley, Selectman Warren, myself. And then you get somebody who loses an election and says, well, I'm not happy with the results of the people, and now I'm gonna go to a position of five member board of selectmen. Disgusting, in my opinion. And I would, I would ask for the people of Akushna to show up November 6th town meeting and vote this down hard. Um, it's not in the best interest of the town. And what becomes even more dangerous that I don't think he's put much thought into, okay, is this. If you don't have anybody that wants to run for the next two seats, or maybe just one person, and maybe in future years there's a vacancy, what happens is this. The Board of Selectmen, the town clerk would then send us a letter saying there's been a failure to elect. And who's responsible to make that appointment? The Board of Selectmen and the town moderator. So you could possibly have members of this board appointing one of their buddies, right, to push an agenda in any calendar year if that occurred and get what they want. It's not what the people, I don't believe, it's what the people of this community deserve is to have that more politics, bigger government. Because that's what you're proposing is bigger government. And I think that's wrong. I think to today's world, people don't want bigger government, they want smaller government, right? Um, we hear it all the time when it comes to the federal government, state government, and things of the like. Why would you, why would you propose a five-member board of selectmen in a small town of 10,500 residents is beyond me. Um, and it's surely the people that I've spoken to, Mr. DeRoche, see now you're not here for me to speak to you, so I'll do it over the camera so everybody understands. What, what this is, is demonstrating is that you're a sore loser. No other selectman has lost an election, and I know much better people than you that have lost an election off this board. And maybe they didn't deserve to be knocked off this board, but they were by the people, just as you were. And nobody's ever attempted a five-member board of selectmen because they lost an election. It's an embarrassment, quite honestly. Uh, it's a reflection of your character. Um, and, and, I, and I would ask the people, to come to town meeting on November 6th and shoot this petition down and shoot it down hard. Gentlemen? <coughs> Mr. Inkley? Well, Mr. Walnut. I don't know that I can follow that, but um, I will say this. I think if we're gonna do anything, there should be an overall examination of town government, how it operates in general. You know, should we have elected town meeting members? Should we have you know, elected boards, we have an elected town clerk, an appointed town clerk. There's so many f facets of town government that probably should be examined. But to do it, to cherry pick this, um, this one issue I don't think is really doing the town any service. Um, you know, so I, I'm, I'm out on this. And you know, I always have been and always will be. So anyway. Mr. Mr. Chairman. I just want to make one point very abundantly clear and the reason why I personally think a three-member board is important is open meeting law. We all make our own individual decisions based off our own research. With a five-member board you can skirt open meeting law completely and come to an agreement with one other sitting member of that board and you can really push an agenda with a five-member board and I think it's dangerous for this town and I agree with a lot of what you said. Ultimately, this is up to the people. The people that I've already spoken to this about know how I feel about it. I do not support it. And the only reason why I'm gonna make the motion is because I'm legally required to. Uh, this was approved by the town clerk and it follows Massachusetts general law requirements. <coughs> so, Mr. Chairman, I move to acknowledge that a citizen's petition was received and certified by the Board of Registrars for the Board of Selectmen the petition of the general court for passage of a special act to increase the board of selectmen from three members to five members to acknowledge notification from the town clerk's office of the same and to place it on the november 6 special town meeting warrant or take any other action relative thereto second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. with regret absolutely Uh, vote to close fall town meeting warrant. Well, that's an easy one, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, there's a memo for the board 
and there's some draft documents I'd ask the board but so you know review them and then come and talk to the staff uh, to give us advice but uh, we are looking at closing the warrant with everything that has come into the town clerk's office and the board of selectmen's office and that allows the staff to move forward to put the warrant language together and to provide this board with all the background they need. It's not a review of the warrant, it's just a vote to close the warrant. Correct. Is there a motion? To uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to close the fiscal year 2024 Cushnick Fall Town Meeting Warrant with all articles as submitted to the clown, Town Clerk's Office of the Board of Selectmen's Office as of this date and time. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, sir. The town administrator's report. You, you want to chat? Quickly, I'll go through it. Uh, town planner, we interviewed one applicant. We're scheduling a se second applicant. I've also uh, had the town administrator in Mattapoisett uh, a conversation. Uh, they have been advertising for two years for uh, plan, uh, a town planner, same salary as ours. They've had even less interest. So uh, I asked the board for direction to see if we can discuss contracting and staffing a town planner position 50% with for us and 50 uh, including benefits and 50% for Mattapoisa. I've talked to the planning board chair and he is on board with it. Yeah, so you're talking about the f Mr. Francois, the planning board chair, is on board with discussion with Mattapoisa. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was going to say I am as well. I've seen that advertisement out there, so I think if we could, you know, do something in you know, we pony up some money, they pony up some money, and we have... They've changed the title three times, but not the salary. It, it's, it's one of those things, right? We talked about that earlier. There's several positions for planners. There's several positions for a lot of different things going on in, in on MMA, and it doesn't seem like anyone's getting anywhere um, trying to fill those positions. So, I mean, again, I think it's a great plan if we can call it regionalization. We talked about that decades ago. If that's something that we can do and share services with another community, I'm 100% on board with that. Mm -hmm. um, so we we'll feel, yeah, I feel that way as well. And uh, parents and young people out there, go get your certifications in municipal government, whether it's a town administrator, treasurer, collector, town accountant, planning, you know, planning, uh, you name it. Because that's where the jobs are going to be. You may not be a millionaire, but it's a great opportunity to contribute to your community. Um, so yep. go get your certifications and you'll be set for the rest of your life. So, Mr. Kelly, uh, uh, while we're on the planner thing, I just want I want to have a little discussion with the board about the, the planning position because there's a lot of things going around with with staff, and I want to offer this out now. Is I, f I strongly feel that we need. A, a the part-time clerk. I know the amount of money was reduced in the budget to save some bucks to, to allocate towards a town planner to get a little bit more money to be able to pay a full-time town planner. I, sh I strongly believe that we need to have a clerk in that office for the 19 and a half hours. So if whatever we need to do, if the real allocation of funds, that's what we need to do. The planning board needs staff. So if they need at least that, go back to that 19 and a half hour clerk's position, so be it. And I also feel strongly about the building department's clerk's position that that needs to be kept separately as well. So we need to hire for the building department's clerk position full time, whatever it is, like we had in the past. Just do it and give the planning board the tools that they need and the staff that they need to be able to function as an office. Please do that as well. But trying to combine the two positions and having somebody running up and down stairs on a daily basis, I don't think that's a great idea. I agree. I think that's a horrible idea. I think it, it puts too much strain, especially on the secretary or the clerk, whatever you want to call the, the folks that we're hiring, senior clerks, clerks, whatever it is. They just need to be left alone in their office. There's, there's, there's work that needs to be done. The clerk for the planning board 
Paul did a phenomenal job in that office, rearranging everything, filing everything. That, that man was an incredible asset to that planning board. I know that we can duplicate that again with somebody else, right? It takes a little bit of time to train and figure everything out, but they're just clerk positions, it's answering phones, filing things, setting agendas and things of the like. We need to, we need to get back to the basics when it comes to staff. Building department needs their own. Planning department needs their 19 and a half hour clerk's position. So be it. We can figure out the money later. There's money around for us to figure that out. It just, they need help. The planning board. The building department needs help. We have resumes I think that you guys are going to be looking at. Figure Actually, it out. Actually, we've got two interviews scheduled. Okay, so just let's just, I just want to put it on the table. Forget about trying to save five or ten grand from the planning board to pay for more for a planner. It is what it is. That money's been set aside. Let's just move forward and put the staff in place that we need to get the job done and serve the residents of our cushion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, well, I'll jump forward. Uh, I've had discussions with the building commissioner. We're advertising for a local inspector. He's going to, uh, because of his retiree status and the change of the law, he's going to be more of a mentor and that local inspector would work under his license. We're uh, in, uh, scheduling interviews with two individuals for the clerical position in the building department. So we are moving forward with that. The facility maintenance department, uh, we hired the custodian at the COA. I met with the co-op administrators at Old Colony. Uh, we've come to an agreement uh, very possibly in January with the juniors uh, to have co-op students in facilities, IT, and cable TV. Uh, we've re-advertised a treasurer collector position, as you mentioned. We interviewed someone today. We're interviewing someone with hope at the end of next week. Uh, Lake Street, uh, I've met uh, with the cranberry growers and the Lake Street Committee rep, we came to a consensus about not using chemical remediation. You were involved with that, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, we've reviewed the new lighting and we've d discussed a number of issues with the ConCom chair. Mr. Kelly, Mr. Walna. Uh, on the issue of Lake Street, I would just ask the board, since it's on the agenda, um, that we send a letter to the Conservation Commission or to the chairman asking for a formal, like what, what's the process for, to get the weeds done with the rake? This way the goalposts aren't moving, we'll have plenty of time to work on it, but I really would like it memorialized because there's a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So if we, I'd like to um, make a motion to ask the, the chair of the Conservation Commission to provide the Board of Selectmen a plan to accept, uh, you know, weed remediation through the uh, aquatic rake or the hell, whatever the hell the thing's called. Um, and this way we'll know what, what, what we're dealing with. I couldn't agree more. Um, <coughs> I go down here all the time with my dog. Um, it's sad, it really is. And I know Selectman Wona, you've, you've, you know, you push the envelope, right, to try to get things done. Um, you know, you know, some of us, let's face it, we didn't realize with the farmers and things like that, drawing the water off with DEP permits and everything else, but hydro raking seems to be the way to go. Um, I think it's imperative that this board take swift action on Lake Street and do something about weed remediation because those ponds, quite honestly, are just closing in. Um, it's an embarrassment. I think we need to do something ASAP. I support your initiative to send a letter to the Conservation Commission Chairman. Um, other towns are doing it. Figure it out. Bring that plan to the Board of Select. And I'm just asking for relief from the Chairman. It's not to put him on notice. No, no, look. It's just the Commission. We need some help from the Commission members. Correct. Yep. To provide us a game plan and a roadmap as yep. to what they need to see to approve it. Correct. 100%. Very 100%. It, is, it should be, as you say, 
very simple. Right. It seems to be just roadblock after roadblock after roadblock, and, and that's got to stop. Um, we don't do something soon. Um, You're going to lose it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty bad right now, my friend. I just went down here this morning. It's, 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 um, the cons, it's, it's, they, 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 they again, they again, mudded to the point where it's going to cost a lot more, if, if at all possible, to save those lakes. So they're, they're an asset, right? I know they're not us, technically, but they are in the town of Acushnet, and they are an asset to our residents. Um, and I think a lot of people want to see those lakes cleaned up, including myself and Mr. Hinkley. I, I know you've been 100%. there, Mr. Wonaz, 100 I mean, he took that initiative on, and then, you know, only the, as he said, get the goalposts moved. So I, I appreciate your passion, Selectman Wona. I'm 100% on board with you on that. Um, Mr. Inkling, 100% uh, on board with that. 100%. Mr. Chairman, if I may, too, I'd like to, I'd like to clarify a few things. Um, I stay in pretty decent communication with the community through social media, and I want to reiterate the fact that a lot of people spend time yelling about the weeds, asking us to get something done with the weeds, and I think anybody that is watching can now understand the reason why the weeds aren't taken care of. There's a process to it. There's people that have to be involved, and not a lot of people realize that up until very recently, we couldn't do a single thing with those ponds. Correct. The town of New Bedford owns the property, and in my term here, which is only not even... It's two years old, not even. We finally got halfway through that, the permission to actually do that. And I want to thank Selectman Wona for actually spearheading that because mm -hmm. it, it, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of effort to get another community involved to the point where they give us permission for it. And I want people to realize that it's not cut and dry. We can't just go out there and stop pulling weeds by hand. We can't pour chemicals in there. We can't put machinery in there without vetted proper procedure and I want more people to get involved and show up so they can actually see what we have to go through to get certain things done and I just want to reiterate that Selectman Warner did it the way he felt was right and nobody had given us a procedure for it that's all we're asking now is the proper procedure to do it and let's get it done nope. and have some fun on Lake Street correct it, that's what it should be it should be a fun project yep. right for the town to be involved in that project and seeing the outcome of those lakes getting cleaned up. Um, for some reason, it's turned into a, the complete opposite and it's more like a showpiece of no one not doing this, no one not. And look, we are, we will get it done. There's no question in my mind. We will get it done. Um, so, this motion to ask for a uh, roadmap from the CONCOM Conservation Commission and actually ask them to appoint a member of the commission to serve as liaison to the board on this project. I think that would be great. I will talk to second. the chair. There's been a motion, there's been a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to skip over the next part and return to it at the end. Uh, as far as emergency management, I want to make sure that the public knows that there's going to be a national alert at 220 on October 4th. And as such, we've met with the EMA and uh, twice on it. We were going, we're going to put out notice on our various social media. The school is going to do that too. What we don't want is a war of the worlds type of situation that people aren't informed and they think this is for real. It's going to hit the cell phones, the radios, the TVs, etc. as a practice national alert, uh, probably because of what happened in Hawaii. But I would hate to have parents think it's for real and show up at the school at 2.20 in the afternoon. So it's going to be publicized as much as possible so we don't have anybody think that it's for real. It's just a national alert. Can we do a reverse 911 before <coughs> that happens? Actually, the school is going to do it to the parents. If we do a reverse 911, 
it, they've been advised that we don't do that and blast it out everywhere because people who hear it on their uh, a recording on their voicemail machines might think it's for real because they haven't listened to the whole thing. So you start off saying this is not real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Else, but okay, we are real. Remind you to all communicate. Right? <laughs> Saturday, I'm just thinking this is a test. This is only a yeah. test. Yeah. Yeah. So you broadcast. Uh, we're going to try to get it out there as much all as right. possible. Uh, for town meeting, we uh, talked about. The, the fact the board has to get back to us. We've updated all the staff. The town moderators met with us a couple times. Town clerk, uh, uh, the planning board chair, the board of selectmen staff is going to assist the planning board to make sure all the proper notices are in the newspapers and the proper hearings are held. Uh, we dealt with the uh, Mass Strategic Health Group as far as maintenance goes, I just want the board to know we've repaired Parting Way ramp. Uh, we've made sure our Parting Way sump pump, we repaired the pipes that are not <coughs> operational. Uh, the, uh, in Parting Way, we built shelving and organized all the lumber in the basement. We've repaired and reset the garage door. We've repaired COA shed doors. Uh, that we've installed, as you know, conference room doors here. We've repaired various sills and windows in Town Hall and Parting Way. That was part of the installation of the AC units where we started to install it and the sills started to fall apart. <laughs> so uh, some of the maintenance I questioned in the past, we've repaired the windows in the Town Hall bathrooms. They were leaking. We've sealed the masonry and the south and west outside walls of the town hall. There's a lot of cracks and we find various uh, 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 leaks into the interior. Uh, we repaired the men's room door in town hall so it doesn't slam and rattle every door in the, the place. Uh, this is something I'm very proud of, the YES program. We had a total of 647 hours worked. We expended uh, $9,266 out of the budget. We have a remaining $20,733. Some of that will be used for the co-op programs from Old Colony. Uh, we had jobs done in town hall, town clerk, parks and recs and maintenance. You've got a list. I'd like to thank Brady Baldwin, Riley Fortin, Elizabeth Pereira, Chelsea Amaral, Lila Carvalho, Michael Vardo, Louis Blake Christopher and Evan LaMontagne for their work. They did great jobs and they learned a lot. We should bring them in some night if they have the time. I know they're all pretty active. But. I also, uh, going back, want to thank the staff, the police department, the fire department, the Lions Club, and every uh, the Apple Peach Committee, and everybody else who did the Apple Peach Festival and the parade. It was very successful. Went off without <coughs> a hitch. And uh, I just think it's a fabulous thing for the town. And I am very proud of the, the staff, the public safety people, the emergency management people, forgot to mention them, uh, and the Lions Club for stepping up. It just was great. It was awesome. Mr. Hinckley, I know did a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And uh, you've been really generous with giving praise to a lot of people in town and I think this Warren's Club this was something that you got moving again behind the scenes with a lot without a lot of fanfare so thank you Bob, yeah, you're very welcome, man. absolutely thank you if I could speak on that a little bit you know this was just something that I saw people wanting and I think the biggest benefit to come out of this was the younger people that did get involved and help with this parade and the excitement and enthusiasm I saw on people's faces 
going down that parade route. And I think that's actually going to help. We always say we'd like younger people to get more involved, show up to meetings and do this, show up to town events. And I think this was actually a good kicking off point for that because I think a lot of people realize that when you do get together as a community, you can do some pretty awesome things. And it was, it was a, a great weekend. Yeah, I think I think the nice part about it is is exactly what you said is getting some of that younger generation involved, right? And, and showing what we're made of, the fabric we are, or Kushnet residents are made of, right? There's a lot of people from the outside that are like, gee, I can't believe you guys are still friends after 30, 40, know each other 30, 40 years and you're still hanging around with each other. That's what we're about in the town of Akushnet, right? That's what I'm so proud of is is the people of this community, the way they stand together and united. Um, and, and again, just to, to say thank you to you, Bob, and I believe it was uh, Andrew Chopper that was really involved yep. with the with the parade. Um, Amanda Baptiste yep. stepped up at the last minute with Andrew, I hear. She did. Um, so thank you to you, Mr. Andrew Chopper, and Amanda Baptiste, Mr. Mr. Hinkley, yourself, and, and everybody else that just came out and made it the time um, that it was. Unfortunately, I was ill. I couldn't make it. Um, I apologize to my, my colleagues for not making it. Um, but when I'm sick, I'm not going to be out there exposing myself just to say I was part of an event. I, I, I didn't have the heart to do that to my colleagues riding in the, in the same car um, if I did still have something that I could pass on. So um, unfortunately, I didn't make it and it, and it was a missed opportunity for me. But um, anywho, thank you to everybody um, that volunteered and as Mr. Kelly, I mean, he's named the list, right? Uh, police, fire, EMS, EMA to everybody in public safety. Thank you all for doing what you did for the community. Um, it's, it's what we're made out of, the fabric we're made out of. It was demonstrated um, that weekend, so thank you very much, and, and, and I hope that we as a community can continue on. And I do wanna add one thing, because there's a false narrative going around. Mr. Noble did this years ago about the throwing candy in the parade, okay? That's BS. I'm gonna tell you why it's BS. So somebody that I happen to know very well is in insurance, okay? Okay. That person's told me, you know how much it is for a one-day event to, to cover a parade, a policy with li real liability? A couple hundred bucks, my friend. All right? And throwing <laughs> candy is absolutely allowed. So for somebody to come into this town and take that away from us, is a sad day in a cushion and I'm just putting that out there because Mr. Hinkley was so passionate about getting that parade go back on and I and I turned my back on that parade when I got yelled at for throwing bags of candy because I was told I could throw loose candy so I was creative and I bagged candy and I still got yelled at for doing that and if anybody thinks that those little kids on the side of the road are there to see us yeah it's exciting to some people to see the Board of Selectmen it's nice that we are in that parade and everybody else is in that parade but those little kids are there to catch candy, right? And that's that's to make their time. That's their time. It's the kids' time to enjoy that parade. For us not to throw candy for an insurance policy that costs 200 bucks for one day, it's a shame. So what I'm saying is, is let's figure that out next year, right? Um, it's just, just in case you're watching Mr. Andrew Chopper, you heard it here first. <laughs> So the Apple Peach Festival, for all the policies, it, it's all, it's peanuts, right? Um, the, the Lions Club pulls theirs, the Apple Peach Committee pulls theirs for the, for the grounds and everything else, and then we have to submit the policies and everything else. Um, it's, it's cheap money. The whole thing, insurance coverage-wise, is 600 bucks, all in. And the bigger part of that comes from the, the Lions because they're serving alcohol. But that's it, it's peanuts. So for another 200 bucks, and an insurance policy to make all those little kids' faces glow when you are in that parade? Isn't that worth it? 100%. I mean, come on. And for that to be taken away from our community back when it was, that's BS, man. So I'm just putting it on the table so that next year we have that discussion. Next year we make that parade a lot bigger and better than what it was from this year and, and just build off of that platform um, and give the families what they deserve. It's yep. what we're about, at least from my perspective. 100%. That's the town of Akushnet. Agreed. We're a unique community, my friend. <laughs> so, anything else, Mr. Town Administrator's report? You good? I am Thank good, you. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Feels good to feel good. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's good to see a smile on your face. Good.
it's 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 been a, it's been a long road, man. It's you know kicked my butt, but I'm glad to say I'm back. So, gentlemen, our next meeting is not scheduled for September until September 26. However, we do need to set water and sewer rates. So, I did let um, Miss Silva know that I will be in the office. I always sit down with her first and go through the rates and just back check everything that we're doing to make sure everything's copacetic and you know it makes sense so that when we get into a meeting we don't have to be arguing over 25 cents a tier rate this and that's all flushed out i've been doing it for years kind of flush it out so hopefully we can just if the board doesn't <laughs> mind maybe one day next week we can just do a quick day meeting where we'll bring miss silver in and mr menard in go over the water and sewer rates and we can do it during the day probably take 20 minutes yep. To just bang it out and keep Sounds it off. <clears throat> Is that all right? Yeah, you guys, you guys available all week next yeah. week or end of the week? You're available end of the week. Yes, better yeah. for me. So you available? Same here. Day Thursday, Friday. Friday morning Eat. would be best. Friday morning. Well, Friday. How about, how about you? Well, Friday works. Friday, good for you. Yeah. Well, then we're just going to count on Friday. Right. We'll go with something like that, Mr. Kelly. Okay. Did you say flush it out? <laughs> yeah, flush it. No pun intended. Now you're starting to be a smart aleck. <laughs> I'm glad. You know what? It's 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 good to have that, you know, on the board, right? Where we don't have to always be serious and in your face kind of thing. It's it's nice to demonstrate to the people of our community that we all have sense of humor, and I think that's really what it's all about. But we we know how to get things done. All right? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. We are now adjourned. <laughs>